You think you hate it now, but wait till you drive it. The Kibbe and Friends Show. What it is, bro? Featuring Rob Kibbe. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Justin Corndog Cornette. New guy's in the corner puking his guts out. <laughs> and show producer Bernie McPartland. This is the DJ 3000, and it has three distinct varieties of inane chatter. Talking cars. Do you feel this vehicle is safe for highway travel? Yes, I do. Diving deep on the topics that matter most. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> and the Dukes of Hazard. Available in iTunes, Stitcher, and whatever else it is you listen on. Turn up the volume. The Kibby and Friends Show. Kibby and Friends Show, episode number 131. Available in iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Instagram, and patreon fellas it is the holiday season how are you do you feel the jingle jangle on your feet do you know how many shopping days it is as we record to christmas eve no how many 14 Tell days us. it is december 10th christmas eve is two weeks from right now as we record so if you are hearing this you got even less <laughs> oh man <laughs> I love these shows. I love the Christmas season. We have Christmas stuff coming up here. Uh, we have a special guest. We have John Schneider on the show again. We got Yay! twice in one year for a Christmas purpose. He has a new movie out, shot at his own studio called Christmas Cars, starring he and uh, the General Lee. And uh, our interview with him discusses how did you use the General Lee? Remember how we were saying, I hope he didn't do it like with permission? Mm-hmm. That is answered in the interview. <laughs> <laughs> you will like the answer, and we'll leave it to him. So I'm Rob Kibbe. Justin Corndog Cornette is our co-host, and intrepid producer yep. recovering is Bernie McPartland. Bernie, how are you feeling? What's the Bernie health status update? <laughs> Bernie's feeling a lot better. He's off of uh, his prescribed medication. And uh, washing all that out of the system. And so he's feeling much, much better. Thank you for your cards and letters and wishes. And they're paying off. I felt all right the last time that we talked. I feel 100% better than that and anticipate in a few weeks to be 100% better than that. So we're back bad and feeling good. Are you on solid foods? I'm on chicken and fish, pastas and soups and stuff like that. So things with actual taste and actual texture. Yes, things are looking Mm. up. And are the uh, the number twos, you know, <laughs> also solid? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> Isn't that the true sign of health? Man, if I'd have known that, I'd have made a little video clip. <laughs> of what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could throw a sound uh, effect in here. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Things are looking better, yes. Good, good. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Not doing Lincoln <laughs> Memorial statues yet, but, uh, you know, we're... <laughs> Is it like a rabbit cage, or is it like a? Oh my gosh! Like a a beef stew? <laughs> what would you say? Just for the record, I really don't want to know. Now, Never I see a mind. Lot of other hands going up out there. I don't yeah. want to know that. Your health, Bernie, is is all that matters to us, and uh, that's why. From now until you are purely healthy, we're going to have this conversation at the start of every show. This concludes Bernie's health update. <laughs> Way to go. All right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, uh, on a very serious note, I, I would like to send out a, a note of congratulations to uh, two, two guys with a podcast show, and it's not us. Lightning and Holman, the truck show podcast, hit its 100th episode. Yeah. And uh, and we certainly know what it's like to to go through lots and lots of episodes. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. And that's a big deal. So I just want to wish them the biggest congrats. Yes, there is some news going on in Motor Trend. We're going to talk about that later in the news section, but that's not going to affect them with that show. So um, that's really cool. So congrats, dudes. That's the way to go. Nice. Yep. Listen, I'll come over there and work for you guys if you promise not to ask me about my poo. <laughs> well, that's is that all? I is that, that's what's going to end our relationship. <laughs> I just I'm just worried about you. I know. 
I know. Let's get to something happy here. This is the email segment, and the email segment is brought to you by Holly. Holly is, of course, the official air and fuel delivery system of the Kibbe and Friends Show and the Muscle Car Place Network overall. And again, 14 shopping days until Christmas Eve, as we're recording right now. So by the time you hear this, it's less. Luckily for you, they're holding the deal through December 31st for you to get Holly fuel injection, MSD ignition, NOS... No, NOS. NOS, for God's <laughs> sakes. Hooker headers, a race pack, that whatever you want during the holiday celebration. That's up to 20% off. That would be a great deal. Even Corn Dog is buying through the holidays. Really? And again, we have talked about how cheap he is. That must be some good deal, huh, Corn Dog? I'm frugal. And I let the hobby pay for itself, too. So that's why I sell stuff to let it roll it right back into the hobby. So I'm not cheap. Mm-hmm. Visit holly.com for the holidays and mention us on your order. Santa will thank you. As will Mrs. Claus. Mrs. Corn Claus, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yes, mention us on your order. Mention us on your order. First email here is from Jordan Maggard. This is to warm your hearts here. Uh, it says, Hi, I'm a longtime listener to the Muscle Car Place, the old Kibbe and Finnegan show, the new Kibbe and Friend show. Four months ago, I suffered some health problems and I was off work for all four months. During that time, I listened to your podcast a lot. I also watched a lot of Roadkill. I also watched a lot of Finnegan's Garage on YouTube. It truly helped me through a very hard time and was often the only source of happiness and relief I would get daily. Thankfully, I'm on the mend, and I have a new job I absolutely love. Your podcasts, as well as Roadkill, keep me inspired to follow my dreams of fixing up my 86 C10. I would appreciate if you would pass this along to Corndog, Bernie, and Mike. Just saying thanks for keeping my spirits up. Keep up the good work. Merry Christmas to you and yours. So, I want to make sure you guys heard that. I texted a picture of that email to Mike as well. Thank you. Very nice. Very kind. Sounds like you're a grouch. He didn't mention you. No, he didn't. Did you tell him to stick it as well? I did. I said, Jordan, <laughs> stick it. <laughs> no, no did you I ask didn't. Did his bowel movements were? No, not at all. You know what? <laughs> Somebody's got to bring the funny, damn it. <laughs> and, and, no, uh, Jordan, I did. Um, I wanted to read that on the air so he got to hear it. Oh. And, uh, and I absolutely mean it. Those are the kind of emails that. Uh, that's the whole reason you do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, a yeah. wonderful thing. Really cheered me up. And more importantly, Jordan, I'm glad it, glad it cheered you up. Nothing is better for your mind and soul than a little bit of happiness. These shows are, they're just junk food, right? We're not curing cancer here. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> they're there to give you a little bright spot in your day. So uh, much appreciated. Thank you, Jordan. It sounds always. like he's got a cool project, too. 86C, yeah. Tim. Yeah, those are, uh, those are pretty hot. Jordan, if you're not already, I'm sure you are. Ronnie Wetch's show, C10 Talk. Make sure you are a subscriber to that. Tune in for that. Uh, you will get a lot of great information over there for sure. And Ronnie's, and he's not cool like we are, but he is cool. <laughs> he's West Coast cool. He's very cool. Like, he wears flat bill hats, right? <laughs> yeah. Very well he does, yeah. Yes, he's a he big fella. <laughs> well, he's a firefighter and he's all buff and... Super cool. Uh, uh, he's awesome. Uh, next email here is from Anthony Kobilis. Anthony is on our as a Patreon subscriber. Actually, I think he won. Uh, didn't he win? Uh, yeah, he won uh, one of the Kibbe and Friends show Nathan Warren edition tumblers. Yeah. I think. Uh, he sent in a note, and uh, here's what he says. He says, in the last show, uh, you guys mentioned using the Patreon contributions from this month, December, for a toy drive. And I would like to know if there's any way to donate more to the cause. I came from a poor household as a kid and had the benefit of people and charities that made sure that Santa made a visit to our house. So after my family and I bettered ourselves, we do our best to pay it forward for the kids and families that are at disadvantage. So this year, I'd like to make my Christmas contribution to the Kibbe and Friends Show Toys for Tots or whichever you guys decide to go with. Just like you, Christmas is my favorite time of the year, but it's not for the weather, but for spending time with friends and family, watching all the classic Christmas movies while drinking your favorite beverage, <laughs> spreading the joy of hope, happiness, of course, toys for the kiddos. I also love this favorite line from my favorite movie, Some Men Are Baptists, Others Catholics, My Father father was an Oldsmobile man. Uh, yes. That's from a Christmas story. Uh, <laughs> yes, that, yes, it is. Yeah, that always made my dad and grandpa laugh when I quote that. Thanks, Rob. Sincerely, Anthony Kobilis. Yes. So what we're doing this month, we have a companion show to this. It's, it is Patreon and it's a listener supported show. 
no sponsors in it. And there are different membership levels. And every single month, you're charged, whatever your donation level might be. This month, for the month of December, uh, we have decided we're going to take our December monies and uh, give them to Toys for Tots. We were planning to just write a check and do a submission there. So if you'd like to do more, Anthony, I'm going to throw that one back to you. You can donate more to Patreon. I believe you can do that on a one-time basis as well, so you don't have to up your membership. Or you can go to your own Toys for Tot drive. Because of where we are geographically, we weren't planning to put a bunch of toys together and all go to donate them together. Uh, I think we are just planning to write a check. But I would like to do that by this time next week so that they have time to be put to good use. But, yeah, Toys for Tots, is um, there's a Marine component, United States Marine component to the back of that. And uh, that's the one we are planning to do. Our church does a, an event every year. It's called the Perfect Gift it's free for people to attend. I think I mentioned it last week, but we always have a room called the present room, and that's where kids and only kids can go. There are things there provided for other people that they can wrap and give away as presents. That's the point there. By all means, Bernie Corner, if you have some other suggestions here, I'm I'm all ears, but um I was thinking cash and quick was the best way to go. <laughs> Yeah, that's where uh, organizations can do the most good. I mean, it saves them from taking the time out of what they have to do anyway in a very busy time of year to go out and shop and all that. They can take that and they can go pick partners that they work with on a normal basis, make a bulk purchase, and then that's handled. It's much, much more efficient. So, yeah, I'm on board with that. Absolutely. Thank you guys and gals who want to join us in that effort as well. Again, car people, the biggest hearted people in... (sighs) Gosh, you know, pick your hobby. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere, yeah. yeah. It's just a, a generous time of year to start with, but for you to be able to do that, not only are you donating to us because you want to, nothing you have to do, there's a myriad of other things I know that you already give to because you have generous hearts, and it's something we get to do together, and this is just something so, so very special. We've been so blessed. We are thrilled to be able to do this, so thank you. Patreon.com slash KF show is where you're going to want to go if you'd like to join in on that directly. We make a contribution this month. We're going to get it to the right place. Awesome. Um, That does conclude the email segment. Um, This isn't an email thing, but I want people to submit to it. I really want to bring back the Hood Slide of the Week competition. (laughs) And I would like to nominate Corndog as judge. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds good. I second that. Yes. So what what I want you to do, if you're listening... So your car, whatever, it doesn't have to be a generally, it doesn't have to be even good. doesn't matter what it is. It does have to be a vehicle of some kind. Let me clarify that. Uh, <laughs> it has to be something with an engine and four wheels. Okay? You can't do like a falling off a John Deere tractor, nothing like that. Uh, but uh-huh. we want to see you do a hood slide. And you have to be yee You have to do something very... Very vocal. Corn Dog will judge it each week, and we'll send oh, I don't know, stickers to the winner. A couple stickers to the winner every single. That'd week. be fun. Just submit them to Patreon or, or not Patreon, our Instagram page, and we'll try to look at those uh, each and every week. Tag the uh, Kibbe and Friends. What's is it? Just Kibbe and Friends, or is it Kibbe and Friends show I think on it's the Kibbe Instagram? And friends. Okay, tag them, Kibbe and Friends, in the uh, yeah video or in the comment, and we'll we'll see it. Like you said, it doesn't have to be a generally. It could be a Honda Accord. It could be a Silverado. We're going for uh, the best just all around. We're going for glory. It's even better if you go through a window and take off. You know, whatever you want to do. Bonus points if it is a generally. Even better. uh, You're probably going to win if it's a generally. Go over the roof. Hey, you know what? Go over the roof. If you want to send us uh, the bonus ones where you didn't make it in the window. (laughs) <laughs> you know, more, are great. <laughs> more comics hold the beggar. But uh, yeah, uh, Instagram. I just looked it up. It is Kibby and Friends. That is what it is. Okay, Bernie, it is time to roll to the news. And Bernie, the news segment is brought to you by Aluma Trailers, proud support of the Muscle Car Place Network, made right here in Iowa. People have been tagging us on Instagram with their Aluma trailers, which is cool. awesome. Thank you for yes. doing that. And believe you me, they noticed that. In fact, that, that came up in a discussion this very week with them. So thank you. Seriously, if you're looking for a trailer, especially this time of year, it's high quality. It's aluminum. It's not going to rot out. It holds its value. I know everybody new and used to shopped aluminum trailers. These are a great price for a great product. Uh, and they so, pull a whole lot better, too. You are never going to regret going to an aluminum trailer once you pulled around a steel one. Yeah. <laughs> Here where it's snowing right now, you are never going to regret not having a rusty trailer. <laughs> you 
you're going to love it. Uh, AlumaKLM.com is the website. Make sure you mention us. Treat yourself to a little Christmas gift. AlumaKLM is, uh, is where you go. Bernie, what do we got for the news? I have a couple of items. If, if you're not going to be too sad and bummed out by this, kind of bummer news. Mm. We've been hearing for as long as there's been an internet that print is dead. Everything's going digital. And all the way up until about now, that has been the case. There's always been print of something and there's always been a digital counterpart. But in the last few years, that has not quite been the case. There's been more of a move, not driven by want, I think, but more driven by financial reasons that more and more print things have been disappearing and they are digital only. Well, that has kind of struck home and we've uh, come a little closer to home. Our good friends at the Motor Trend Group have now ceased, I know you've heard this, and it's still trying to sink in. They have ceased printing not everything, but they stopped printing 19 of their bulk magazines that we probably have had in our mailboxes for years and years yeah. and years. It's a pretty big deal. And I want to go down the list first of what they're not printing, then we'll cover what they are still printing and if there's any room for crossover there. So if we've got a minute, if there's 19 of them. We have uh, time for this? Yeah. People need to hear it. I mean, it's reality. All right. Well, we'll take it in alphabetical order, starting with numerics and stuff. So here we go. Things that are not being printed anymore as of this week from the Motor Trend Group, and they include four-wheel and off-road. Mm-hmm. Next one, automobile magazine. This one hurt. Car craft, Chevy High Performance. I took both of those magazines. Next was classic trucks, diesel power, hot rod deluxe, JP. I don't know if we had access to those. I never really saw those on our racks here where I live. Yeah. Low Rider we had. Mopar Muscle we had. They're not printing anymore. Muscle Car Review. That was kind of a more high-end magazine, I think. That was a, a thicker one. Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards. Mustang Monthly, followed by Street Rotter. Super Chevy. There's another one I took in the day, mm. or until about a year ago, I guess. Super Street. Trunk Trend. I took that at one time. Trucking. And vet and uh, Jerry Mathers as the beaver. But uh, that's the 19 <laughs> that they're not printing anymore. Here's what they are still printing. Closer to the mothership, I guess. Motor Trend as a magazine. Four-wheeler as a magazine. And more of the mothership thing, Hot Rod is still being printed. So I guess they're going to encompass some of these sub-brands into these things kind of like what we did rob with uh, the pro touring podcast we condensed that down from a full show into a segment perhaps they're going to do something like that with these yeah. uh with these other mothership publications but you know we'll get into this what a pain it is to be an editor and photographer and uh layout design artist for all of these magazines that are basically doing the same thing especially you know you get your super chevy's car crafts chevy high performance That's all basically the same magazine. I can see some rationale for this, but it's still going to hurt because we're all print guys. Corndog has, I think, contributed to the death of more trees in his file folders than than anyone we've met recently. But it's going to be tough. And I know there's some loose ends to pick up. Uh, People, you probably have some subscriptions outstanding yet to these magazines, how all that gets handled. But we'll work it out. But here we are in the late 2019s saying that... uh, some of our favorite, uh, not even childhood, but manhood memory makers are being put theoretically on the shelf. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, this, this is not in, um, in disregard to any of our friends that are out of work right now because of this change in business structure. It's a reality of the sign of the times. It may, in some circles, be overdue. Uh, here's my understanding. I have checked around with a few friends that, that do work there. Those that are on the editorial staff, I believe they do have the ability to stay online. All the properties are going to stay online in some version or form, is my understanding. If you were involved in the physical print and distribution, that is the part that goes away. It's sad. Can I disagree with the decision? Well, no, it's not my business. Here's an example. The Des Moines Register is the biggest newspaper in the state of Iowa. They used to have a building. Today, they rent office space in a medium-sized office in downtown along with lawyers and a kinkos. It's just a sign of the times. The part that's hard for us as car people is it's a real treat to A, get a magazine, but B, to get your car in a magazine. Oh, yeah. I have a, a sign on my wall right now of when my Chevelle went to SEMA, and it made it in Super Chevy Magazine. It made the cover 
of Super Chevy magazine. Super Chevy is the first magazine that I ever got as a kid. I remember I was eight and my mom got me a subscription for my birthday. I remember reading Super Chevy magazine laying on the living room floor on the carpet. And why print was cool is because of it's exclusive. There's a distribution model there. It's like TV and radio. Unlike the internet, which we are doing now, there's gatekeepers to it. Somebody can say no. <laughs> it's yeah. very hard to get to. And again, that's changed. We live in a, an instant consumption society. Most of the stuff that you've seen in the magazines, uh, you've already seen online, in some cases, many times over and over again. You know, I, I've seen a lot of people lamenting like, and almost like shaking their fist in anger about it. Well, you could have done something about it. You could have kept subscribing, and you could have kept buying at the newsstand, and you didn't. That's what happened. So the magazines that survive, those are the ones that can live in a doctor's office. You know, but the rest are too niche. I remember going to one of the first press conferences for a company at SEMA. They went around because it was an actual press conference, and they asked everybody where they were from, and the only ones they cared about were the print magazines at that time. Anything online was kind of second tier. It'll be interesting now because we're all online. <laughs> There's no print left, basically. So, When I found out about it, I sent you all the message. I also sent a message to my friend who is the editor of Mopar Collector's Guide, which, of course, they're not affiliated with, you know, Motor Trend or whatever. And he said, you know, of course, he's bummed out about it, even though that's the competition. Mopar Muscle's the competition, but he was bummed out about it because, of course, he loves all the magazines as well, too. He said, but it kind of worked out good for them because their phone started going off the hook ringing with uh, vendors. Mm -hmm wanted to advertise. They were bummed out because they've been advertising with these other companies, these other magazines for a while now, and maybe for one reason or another didn't advertise with them, but their phone went off the hook ringing, you know, trying to get some space in their magazine. So mm -hmm. yeah, I guess it kind of worked out good for them. But, you know, like you say, though, it's this kind of where everything's going. So it's probably just a matter of time before they're gone, too. So I hope that's not true. I think there will be a place for more boutique -y, you know, real high-quality print productions. I've had this conversation with uh, Rick Schmidt from MPD both on and off the air. Uh, he's very much a believer in print because he knows that the only people surviving in print are the ones that are doing it well. And, you know, that's kind of a cruel... <laughs> cool feeling right now, <laughs> especially when we see titles like Mopar, Muscle, or Super Chevy, you know, these kind of beholden ones. But if I'm totally honest, I stopped subscribing to print magazines almost 10 years ago. If I ever read them, it was for free at a checkout stand or something, and not even checkout stand. I'd have to go find the magazine stand at Walmart. I don't even know where the magazine stand is at Walmart anymore. I don't even know if they Buy have the gift one. cards. <laughs> Buy the mm -hmm. gift cards? Is that where they are? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's a sign of the times, but uh, we, you know, certainly if you're listening and, and this affected you personally, if you had a job last couple weeks before Christmas, that sucks, and we're sorry to hear that for you, and uh, we wish you the very best, and you know, I guess we'll, we'll kind of see how things go here. It is interesting times, <laughs> that is for sure. Yeah. Well, also from Motor Trend, they are proud to announce today that three new people have jobs. They are Dax Shepard. Rob Cordry and Jethro Bovingdon. They're the new hosts of the highly anticipated, you've heard this, Top Gear America is coming back to the airwaves. So mm -hmm. that's going to be premiering in the spring, I believe, 2020, coming up this year. Only on the Motor Trend app. Nothing broadcast announced as of yet. And the new Top Gear America, their words, will be delivering a fresh, unique American take on the classic. I thought that's what Rutt was doing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, me too. We'll, we'll see what that's going to pan out as. I, I hope it's good because I think Top Gear America, the one that we love so much, I still have many episodes of that DVR. And when there's nothing else on, that's one of the places I go to see the adventures, just to see how those three interact on that. So with a happy heart and a raised eyebrow, I will be watching. They're all pretty household names other than in our circle. Jethro Bovingdon will probably be known. He, he's a driver. Uh, he's on other Motor Trend. I think Head to Head is another show that he's on. But Dak Shepard and Rob Cordray, those are comedian actors. 
Dax Shepard does have a podcast show. It's it's a huge show. I think it's called Armchair Expert. I listen to shows when I want to hear who the guest is. Rob Cordry's comedian, lots of different things. I enjoyed the one with, with Rutledge and Adam and um, Tanner Faust Tanner a lot. I really liked that show. I was sorry when it ended. I think it's one of the last TV shows that I looked forward to every episode of and actually you know, made time to sit down and watch it as soon as it came out live. There was, a, there was one in between the current one and the one we just discussed, and I, I don't remember who was in it. It didn't work. It didn't live. It was very, very short. Yeah. I couldn't even tell you who was in it. I have totally forgotten. But uh, anyway, you know, we'll, we'll see where this one goes. I wish them the best. I didn't know who they were going to announce. I knew they were announcing something. That was kind of the buzz going around at SEMA is that this was happening. It's here. So I guess we'll, I guess we will see. How many freaking podcasts do you listen to? Because every show you say you listen to this one and you listen to that one and you listen to those. Do you ever sleep? I got to pack my brain and steal from all the other people. <laughs> <laughs> I also, other than one show, I listen to everything at 1.5 speed. There's one oh. show that I listen to nor- at normal speed. But everything else, and I do this in bits and pieces when I can. Like, you know, you go for a run, you walk the dog, uh, driving back and forth to, from the office to home. You know, I'm just kind of jam it all in. I got a funny little tidbit for you. You were talking about one time I was listening back when Finnegan was on the show. And I was listening to y'all talk. And I was fidgeting with my phone. And I accidentally hit it and slowed it down. And I was rolling on the floor because both of y'all sounded stoned and drunk and talking. And it was hilarious. And I just, in my work bay, just laughing and carrying on because it was so funny. And then y'all would start laughing and it was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Very Beavis and Butt. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> and it was all by accident. And then I started doing it a couple of times and I was just, it made it even better. My wife has done that. It cracks her up too. Like, you sound so stupid. I love it. <laughs> oh, okay. Any other news, Bernie? Well, this one from across the pond and credit to the Daily Mirror who uh, provided some of the material. Jane had had enough of her husband and his usual routine. It was normal for most. Paul would head off for a hard day's toil, punch the clock, and then head for the bar for a quick belt with the boys before heading home for his nightly routine with the kids and the family. It was the belt that Jane was tired of wearing. So, she being an entrepreneur, took the keg by the tapper and created something she thought would help, truly, truly help. She made a pub in her own backyard. Hmm. complete with benches, complete with taps, with TVs, restroom down the hall. She called it the Doghouse Inn, and her husband's totally on board with this. Now folks come to her house after work. They can have a dip there, and everything uh, is good, and they're happy about it. It took a lot of money and uh, several months to complete, but they're all happy with it, and it's all good. But to me, that seemed all too familiar. Maybe it seems familiar to you, too. And so I got looking back in my mind and looking back through some of my files, and a lark, yes, the light bulb went off. I have heard this before. Maybe you've heard this as well. She said, I'm going to hire a wino when you decorate our homes so you feel more at ease and you won't need to roam. Probably never have heard that uh, one. I don't know what it is. Is the Oprah <laughs> Good guess. It's David Frizzell from back in the 80s or 90s. That was a huge, huge hit. But I knew I'd heard that before and went back and pulled that up. So uh, they've hired a wino to decorate their home, and that's good stuff. That's all I got. You got anything? Nope. We are huh? done with the news you need to know. Automotive and otherwise. Awesome. Let's move on to the Christmas Game Show segment presented by WildTech. WildTech is the educational institution that teaches automotive trades, the repair, diesel technician, restoration, hot routing, upholstery, and yes, automobile maintenance techniques you need to go from no training to a full-time job. That's right. You can actually make an honest living just by getting educated in what you do and then doing it well. Go to wildtech.edu for more information. And this week, tomorrow, in fact, I'm interviewing uh, one of their diesel tech professors and a student. 
And I was really excited about that. I certainly wanted a professor on, but I really want a student, you know, just as much, maybe even more, to hear what it's like from their perspective. I want to know what it takes to go from, well, zero to hero, I suppose. So Mm -hmm. wowtech.edu, they're supporting us because this is important. This is important to get the word out about the trades, and uh, you still have a good opportunity to do that there. So here we are. It is 2019 right now. This is the 30th anniversary of Christmas Vacation. Now, Mike and I reviewed the movie Christmas Vacation two years ago. And we're not going to review that again this year. But I did think this would be a good time to do a little bit of trivia and pit Corndog and Bernie against each other because it's Christmas. (laughs) And isn't that how we choose winners in life? By beating each other at games of senseless trivia? And this is a movie that I would put up there with Back to the Future or like It's a rewatchable movie. You can watch this every time it comes on and laugh every time it comes on. So I have put together on my own a set of questions that I think are going to figure out who's the most important elf. Are you guys ready? Hmm. Ready. Okay, let me go ahead and queue up. I don't have a Christmas version of Spanish Flea, but, you know, I got what I got. Okay, we're going to, and you got to keep score on your own. Because I, I usually lose track and get around. Corndog, you are up first. And oh, boy. I, I think you told me this once, so that's why I'm starting with this. What is the actual name of the street that the Griswold house uh, was filmed on, on the Warner Brothers set? Uh, the actual street. And it may be the lot. It um, has It's a color of hair. I don't have a clue. The first thing that came to get to my mind was uh, Lamar Street, but uh, that's not it's, it. It's Blondie. Yeah, it is. I don't know. We're gonna you got me beat. I may have been looking at an actual, you know, satellite image, and they actually had the street name, so I didn't know that off the top of my head. But okay, Blondie. <laughs> Partial credit, Bing. <laughs> <laughs> <Not really. laughs> I'll take it though. I only knew it because you had told it to me like two years ago. <laughs> so I'm still giving you credit. Uh, Bernie, what kind of car do the Griswolds drive? It's a wagon. Yep. Oh man. <laughs> you both are getting cold. <laughs> it's a wagon. What kind of wagon is it? I was trying to, th- I can see it. I can see the front end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an 80s panel. Yep. It's not the family truckster. It's the more modern. It's the football-looking one. I give. I give. Oh, boy. Okay. This is off is to it a Buick. Buick? No. No, it's not a Buick. It's the most common four-door sedan and wagon of the time, the Ford Taurus. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it is a That's Taurus wagon. That's what he wagon. said. Yeah. He, he said, said Taurus. He said football, <laughs> which I, totally makes sense to me. I, I got that. Rep- yeah, it does look like a football. The emblem looks like a football. It does look like a football. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Corn Dog. This might be a stretch. I don't know. We're going to find out. Who wrote the movie? <laughs> the last one was. Who wrote this movie? Oh. Here's God. a hint. He has written a lot of great yeah. movies, including... Plane yep. trains and automobiles. John. Mm-hmm. Yes, not, yes. Not a, uh, starts with an H. It does start with an H, and it ends in Hughes. Not, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say Holmes you, or Hughes. You got it. You got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrible at this. Okay, you get points for that. So uh, I've lost half track. And half and now. I've got okay. one point. You've got so. one point. Bernie's at zero. Okay. <laughs> Bernie. Got to pause the music here. You have to finish this line. I'm going to play for your line and pause it. I want you to finish it. Are you ready? Okay. And why is the carpet all wet, Todd? What's the next line? I'm going to play it for you. I again. don't. No, I got it. I got it. I don't know, Margo. Perfect answer. <laughs> <laughs> and why is the carpet all wet, Todd? I don't know, Margo. There's even a sweater for that now. <laughs> Boom! All right, we are back up, tied up. There you go, corn dog. Finish this line. I think you can do this. <laughs> What's the next thing he says there? <laughs> Is that where he's empty in the RV? Yes. <laughs> we'll edit this. It's full. <laughs> <laughs> That's as close as we're going to get for you. Yeah. Way to go. I love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will, of course, which Bernie will edit, play the real thing anyway. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> 
Corn dog <laughs> bonus points. If you were paying attention, uh, you heard a tuba and an accordion playing a song. What song were they playing? Rudolph the Red Nose Ring. Yes. Mm-hmm. Bonus point in my you. head. <laughs> yeah, you've got it right. Bernie, true or false? One of Clark's in laws is driving a luxury vehicle from the 1960s. Is it a 69 Cadillac convertible? The exact same year make and model as Boss Hogg's car. False. False. Beep. True. What is it for your bonus points? It is a uh, light blue Lincoln. Yes. Lincoln Continental Suicide Door. Convertible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice Boss Hogg's Caddy was a 70. <laughs> well, screw you. All right. <laughs> this is a, I'm, I'm running the point system right now. Uh, corn dog. What happens to cousin Eddie when Catherine revs up the microwave due to the metal plate in his head? Uh, he starts picking up a radio station, doesn't he? No. Oh, Bernie for the steal. What does he do? Go for it. Piss in his pants. Yes, he pisses his pants and forgets who he was for half an hour. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay, uh, over to Bernie. One of Cousin Eddie's kids is in the clinic being cured off of what? The wild turkey. The wild turkey. Bing! Oh, Bernie is pulling ahead. Bernie is pulling ahead. Yeah. Uh, Corn dog. What TV show did Juliette Louis Dreyfus, who played Margot, become a huge star on right about this time. TV show. Yes, exactly right. Do you guys know what our score is right now? I think Bernie's up by one. Bernie's up by one. Okay. Bernie, what is Clark Griswold's middle initial? W. Bing. Another point for you. Corn dog. Why can't Audrey see the Christmas tree when the family picks it out? Hmm. I'm going to give you some nope. options here. It was an invisible tree. She was snow blind. She was wearing sunglasses or her eyes were frozen. Sunglasses. No. Her eyes were frozen. She'll see it later, Clark. Her eyes are frozen. Her eyes are frozen. (laughs) Her eyes were frozen. (laughs) Bernie, what kind of mug is Clark drinking from when he talks to his boss? His boss. A Tasmanian double mug. Oh, man. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Oh, all right, corn dog. Let's see if you can at least redeem yourself in some way. What is cousin Eddie's dog named? Snot. Snots. Yes, you are back. You're back in the hunt. Still back in the hunt. Uh, Bernie, what does Clark do for a living? Astrologist, advertising executive, food additive designer, or swimming pool installer? Food additive designer. Yes. Corn dog. What animal does not make an appearance in the Griswold house on Christmas Eve? Here are your options. You got to choose which one isn't there. Dog, okay. raccoon, cat, squirrel, which is not in there. Raccoon. Raccoon. You are right. Okay. What is yeah. our score right now? You're the scorekeeper. You made a point about that. So I quit counting. I, I, said I, I, took, the... I put my socks back on. I wasn't going to have to count. I'm the judge and jury. I think you're up right now, though. I'll take that. Okay. We got to get to a set of winner take all. Let's see here. What is Audrey's boyfriend's name? Oh, God. Um, um, Bob, Steve, Tom, <laughs> Blake, Alexander, Jimbo, or Cornelius? Cornelius. I don't think that's true. I can't see I don't the answer. Know who it is. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not even sure that one. <laughs> Actually, I think it's Alexander. Uh, let's end on this one. Whoever answers this first wins. At the end of the movie, what is the song they all sing? Holy Light. Or uh, Holy Night. Um, no, crap. I don't remember. Star Spangled Band. Yeah, right? Star Spangled Band. <laughs> I remember it was yeah. something odd. Play ball. <laughs> yeah, the, grandma. The, yeah, the actress there was Mae West. That was her final screen appearance. She was the voice of Betty Boop. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I love that movie. I love that movie so much. And I, I love to the, watch it again. I saw it uh, again Sunday night. The movie we're going to review next week for our, our final regular show of the year is A Christmas Story. For you, uh, Corn Dog, is that maybe one of your top Christmas movies? Yeah, Christmas Story is to me what Christmas Vacation is to you. I've been watching a Christmas story since I was a kid. That story, you know, reflects my parents' it. childhood quite a bit. They could really resonate with growing up in the 40s. I've thought many times about going over to Cleveland to spend the night at the Christmas Vacation house. It's there. You mm-hmm. know, that would be really awesome. 
Okay, in my defense, before we move on, I want to say why I couldn't get the wagon. I had it in my head, but it's because of the clothing I'm wearing. So I want to, in video, if this ever gets to video, you'll see it. If not, I'll explain it in a second. So let me show you fellas what shirt I'm wearing right now. And I'll get up here and move the mic up a little bit. And as you can see, it's a Griswold family Christmas and it's a wagon that's got the big Christmas tree on top of it, but it's not the right wagon. It's more representative of the family truckster, which is not right for the movie, mm-hmm. but it is right because you're wearing a Griswold family Christmas tree shirt. So that's kind of why it was throwing me off a little bit. But um, His memory was skewed. Memory was skewed, and I'm old, and I've just recently come off very strong medication. I'm drinking water rather than what I would rather be drinking, and... <laughs> The list of excuses can go on and on and on and on, but I'll stop right there. You want to hear another great one? This is how I know my little sister married the right guy. She is so OCD like you, Corndog, about great details. He read the license plate off of the Taurus wagon and got that plate on his truck. And it's just, three, it, it has no meaning. It's not a hint. It's just it's three just, letters. It looks like a regular letters. tag. It just looks like a normal plate, and he got it on his truck. It's That's awesome. Cool. <laughs> uh, speaking of trucks, we've covered this before, but the in the beginning sequence when they're going to get the tree, that uh, old Dodge pickup truck yes. that's chasing them. I think you told me this. That's the same truck from uh, the movie Overboard with Goldie Hawn. Is that right? And Kurt Russell. Yes. And Kurt Russell was driving that truck, yeah. If it's in the same reiteration, I'm sure it's changed a little bit between those two movies. But basically, that's what I remember. That's the same truck. Speaking of Kurt Russell... If you're a Netflix subscriber, do yourself a favor. Uh, Last year, a movie came out called Christmas Chronicles. It's still there. It's available. We watched it uh, over the weekend. I love it. Kurt Russell is Santa Claus. I I won't spoil the whole thing here, but he is the coolest. It's Kurt Russell if Kurt Russell were Santa Claus. He's just playing himself, and it's awesome. And they jump a Red Challenger. Hmm. What was the movie made? It was released to Netflix uh, for Christmas last year. Go look it up. It's a really heartwarming. We might even review it here one day. It's definitely in my watch forever list. It's a very, very good movie. Let's go ahead and and roll to our John Schneider interview, and then we're going to chat about the movie Christmas Cars. And the interview with John is brought to us all by Policy Genius. So as you know, Policy Genius is the company that we've been talking to you about for months. I think we started talking to you about life insurance originally. But now, here's the deal. Just like Clark W. Griswold, who is a mistake waiting to happen for his home, (laughs) you two listening have to know that protecting your home is the most important thing you can do. And you got to watch the Benjamins. If you're putting up 500,000 twinkle lights, you have to cut costs somewhere, and you may as well do so by getting cheaper rates on your home insurance. But I get it. The idea of replacing your policy can seem exhausting. You got to call 14 guys. You got to get the runaround from all of them. Your wife's got a brother that sells insurance, right? We all do. (laughs) Wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to go through all that hassle and could just do it all one place online? Bernie, you understand my needs. I do understand your needs. And I'm so happy that you brought up the fact that everyone has an in-law who's selling insurance. But that's not the only sin in this world when it comes to insurance. No, not only people are hawking insurance like they're going up and down selling vacuum cleaners door to door. When's the last time you saw that? Almost never. It seems everyone wants to schnook you into buying insurance. Barely a stop set, as we say in the radio biz, goes by without a celeb pitch person or worse. Or worse, a highly paid and exploited animal is selling insurance. <gasps> You've seen them. Is that even legal now? You hate them. <clears throat> Dang, it's a real zoo out there. Elephants, emus, lizards, zebras. What's next? Hello, this is Walter, the insurance snapping turtle. And it's December, dang it. No one has time to take insurance advice from an animal. Who? Who has time for that? No time for mauling your way through the mammal world. But whatever's next, whatever its name is, there's still one source of asylum, one source of calm. It's policy genius. Now, they don't employ animals. Think of the liability. (laughs) Think of the mess. No, it's real Mm -hmm. folks. 
that run an online community to help you with your insurance needs. Policy Genius will help you compare your policy against more than 10 insurance companies, not animals, other insurance companies to make sure you're getting the best home insurance coverage at the best possible price. No mess, no liability. Now, if there's a better rate out there, they're going to do all the heavy lifting to make sure that you get switched, everything encompassed. Policy Genius, homeowners, life and auto insurance. Look at those rates. Hey, you creatures, find a cave. Go and hide before we barbecue you. PolicyGenius.com. If only we had the guy to close this out. Somebody could really make the sale. Who would ensure mm-hmm. people understood what to do, how much they need this, and how much we need them to do it. Man, I'm mm-hmm. not the guy. I don't know if you feel up to it, Bernie. I'm done. No, I need somebody yeah, else. I too am spent. I'm not sure I, I'm emotionally there. Corn dog. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. What do you do the call to action? Whether you need home insurance for a new place or you just want to reshop your current policy, head to policygenius.com today. You can get started on your smartphone right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to home insurance, it's nice to get it right. Hey, that was great, man. Nice job. Way to go. Thank you. Way to go. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, everybody, let's please check out Policy Genius. No fool. It's going to save you money. It's super easy. It's going to save you time. If you got an auto policy, bundle that with your home. There's more money uh, in that as well. Uh, you are going to be pleased with the results. And by the way, thank you for supporting us on this one. We heard that you have been, and that's awesome. <laughs> that's totally awesome. And to thank you for that awesomeness, we went out and we got John Schneider on to talk about his movie Christmas Cars. So up next here is an interview that Corndog and I did uh, earlier this week. And we will also have an accompanying YouTube video that's in production work right now. So you can see this as well. Bernie, can you go ahead and roll that right here? And then we'll come back and chat through it. I happily will roll it right here. Enjoy. Just a good old boy. Never meaning no harm. We're rolling now. So I know you've only got just about 10, 15 minutes. But we have back. Yeah. Twice now, twice on is John Schneider, and this time we're talking about Christmas cars. Yay! I which, love it. Which we I'm have. So, excited. so I don't know if you recall, but uh, our co-host Justin here, he was down at your extravaganza event for your birthday, not extravaganza. Yep. yep. And he was there during uh, the generally jump that you did, that is featured in this movie many times. <laughs> Isn't that great? Well, only wait a minute, only once. Isn't it in there twice? Oh wait. You got me. Yep. It's in there twice. When pizza guy jumps, it's me too. Yeah. (laughs) I forgot about that. See, I wasn't driving it supposedly at that point. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I snapped a picture, a series of pictures, and I got my friend to uh, edit them together, and I was going to show it to you. This is just a computer print off, but. Oh, man. So I thought about doing like a poster or whatever. And uh, I would love to have a copy of that. I got to figure out what size, you know, is a common panoramic frame or whatever, and then edit it to that. But but listen, we had a screening last night in Baton Rouge, and people loved it. The word from people who've seen the DVD, a bunch of people, thousands of people have bought the DVD, and hundreds were at the screening last night, is that it feels like watching Dukes of Hazard on Friday night again. Which I yeah, assume you know, was I'm, the point. That was the whole point, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to try to explain to people that there's a recipe. You know, it's not just cars, and it's not just funny, and it's not, I mean, it's a lot of things. It's funny, and it's tragic, and it's very, very funny, but heartfelt like Pizza Guy. When I say to him, you're not always going to, who should I make the picture out to? He said, make it a Pizza Guy. I said, you're not always going to be Pizza Guy, and he says, I didn't think so either, (laughs) which is funny, but tragic at the same time. So uh, people were really, really, they responded to it incredibly well. Even folks, uh, people can download it, too. We've got our Cineflix DOD site that people can download it. What I'm finding people are doing is they're ordering the DVD for Christmas, but they're going ahead and also getting the download so that they can watch it. You don't have to wait for the download. You can download and watch it right now. So that's a question that's come in uh, from many people. We just didn't know what the answer was there, so uh, we can post that. This movie is eerily your life story your name isn't john in the movie but it you're basically playing yourself uh, yeah. real life tragedy it's all of it <laughs> from, from eight, 18 to today right so yeah well you know i'm a firm believer in the if you're given lemons make lemonade right so um when all that stuff was going down alicia said you know if it, i was writing a book i was writing uh, my life my way mm-hmm 
It was actually called Naked when I started writing it, but it turned into My Life, My Way. And uh, she read a couple chapters of it, and she said, you know, this should be the, a movie. You should write a movie, and we'll make a, a Christmas movie and incorporate Dukes because it's the 40th anniversary. So oddly enough, it was the tragic part of what's been happening the last couple of years that was the first part written, and then it was kind of altered and turned into a celebration of Dukes of Hazard because losing the farm lends itself so much to, uh, losing the studio. to Dukes. Yeah. And I actually did. So uh, it makes for great drama. You know, in Dukes, we never actually did lose it. We never had to give it away. But in this one, we did, because that's exactly what happened. And then uh, in the true spirit of Dukes of Hazard, things wound up taking a turn, mm. which actually happened in my life. So is this the redemption, uh, finding a way to financially and emotionally right all the wrongs? Is that truly happening to you right now? Well, Christmas Cars itself is doing great. Good. So in a very real sense, the bearing of my soul is becoming the financial redemption for the reason why I'm bearing my soul. Yeah. And that's complicated. So that's <laughs> got to be a God thing. <laughs> I'm not nearly complicated enough to come up with any of that. I uh, can tell you, my whole fa we all watched it, uh, all of us together. My son is now my age when I was a kid watching the first time. He cried twice. This is not a spoiler uh, because it's on YouTube. When the general got decapitated, uh, yeah. <laughs> he was, he was how upset. How great was that? <laughs> he was I upset. mean, how great and tragic was that? I knew it was coming, but they were shocked. Uh, and then the, when you're in the court scene and you're actually truly crying that that everybody you know was pretty sad about that one well is, is that hard good. you yeah, appear to really be supposed crying. to make you feel something yeah it's supposed to make you laugh i think same thing with music music is supposed to make you laugh or make you cry or make you dance mm -hmm. make you feel something great thing about a movie is you get to do all of that and i'm delighted to find out that christmas cards is affecting people in that way in every mm -hmm. conceivable way they're laughing they're jumping up and down they're driving the general lee and they're crying all in the same movie. We did have some just general questions. How did you get away with using the general? Do you have to go to Warner Brothers for things like this? I mean, we're no. even scared about selling shirts <laughs> half the time. No, no, because it's me, it's called fair use. I play the guy who drove the General Lee, which I am. Hmm. And you'll notice that it's called Bose General Lee throughout yeah, the right. movie. Yeah. And in front of General Lee, because it's mine, it says Bose, Bose General Lee. So, no, there's no issue with that. And if there was, then that would mean that Warner Brothers would have to come after me to fight for the right to display a car that they are no longer displaying anywhere. Right. They'd actually have to fight for the rights of the flag in order to fight for the rights of the car. And I don't see that happening. Yeah. Well, that's also half the plot of the movie is dealing with that very yeah. topic, right? So. Yeah. We got a lot of everything in there. Oh, my gosh. I have a bus loading up over there. Okay. We're doing a live concert at Angola Prison in Louisiana, and we are recording it. So we're doing a, uh, whoops. Oh, try to do that. I just dropped my water bottle, and it landed. <laughs> wow. Good for you. Could never do that again. I've noticed you've been very busy here lately. Yeah. So we're doing this album called Live from Inside, and we're doing it today. Uh, we're doing a bunch of the Redneck Rebel songs, a bunch of the greatest hit songs, and we'll be doing that at 1 o'clock. So I've got to get out there and do a sound check. Got to go to and work. we're doing the whole record. Before you go, because our audience is heavily into you and the cars, we saw you. How many cars did you use in this movie? We, we saw your hero car, and we saw how many stunt cars? We only used, we used two, but... When I jumped the car, that was in April. Yeah. So I had the opportunity to fix it. So really, we went through three, mm -hmm. but one got fixed Yeah. two times. Two times. Because we used to do that, too. We would fix, uh, on Dukes, we would fix cars if we could. We'd put them on a frame stretcher and try to get another jump out of them. Right. right. So this one actually was uh, the same car I jumped is the car that goes under the tree. I think we figured uh, that one. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not the nice one. Not the nice yeah. One. I actually one. talked to Jamie Smith this morning because I knew he was involved with the movie as well, the stunts and, and all, and him and uh, Hunter Baxley. And yep. so he told me who did what and everything. So, yeah, there was. I, Hunter I went was under the tree. tree. Hunter jumped the uh, Uncle Jesse truck. Uncle Denver truck, and James jumped the uh, Byron cop car. Yeah. And yeah. the funny thing about that is that the Byron cop car just stuck in the dirt and wouldn't drive, was done. 
and it, it's a 2006 Charger. Wow. The yeah. 72 truck hit the ground, and then he drove it away. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, good for that. We know you got to yeah. run. Two things. YouTube channel. You are very active on YouTube now. That yes, seems I to am. be a new thing. Is that plans for the future? You'll be doing lots more content there? Got to do a lot more content, and uh, got to deal with people who give me all kinds of grief about some things they, that I get wrong. I didn't know that it was an option to get a uh, rear view mirror on the uh, passenger side of a 69 Charger. I never knew that. I'd never seen one with that over there. I'd only seen that on 68s. <laughs> yeah, and I saw it common. on every 68 I've ever seen. <laughs> so I didn't know that was an option there either. So for those of you who just live to give me grief because I get some little thing wrong about the General Lee, just go get another hobby. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Leave me alone. Leave me alone. And I have people telling me, you know, like they were there. I was there. I know yeah. what we did. Oh, no. Some of those cars were like, what are you telling? Who are you talking to? I said that to somebody this morning. I said, who are you talking to? I think we're the only two in this thread. You missed the sarcasm, obviously. Right, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yes, the YouTube channel is going to do a lot more stuff on YouTube. It's also where the music videos are going. Mm -hmm. People are loving Stone on the One. We're going to release another one, Long Way from Lonely, next week. I am going to, when we get done with the concert today, I think tomorrow I'm going to put together another video because people are now asking more questions about the general and about Duke. So I'm going to go ahead and answer those and do that for a while. And then maybe a Smallville question or two. And uh, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. Oh, speaking of Smallville, many Supermans in here, right? So many, oh, yeah. <laughs> many Supermans. In well, yeah, you know, there's that great thing with Pizza Guy. He says, uh, holy something, Batman. I can't remember what he said. And I said, actually, a, a, a Superman reference would have been far more appropriate. Yes, yeah, quite right. <laughs> People love it. People yeah, love yeah. all the little Duke's crumbs and Collier and Company crumbs and Smallville crumbs that are all throughout Christmas cards. So, folks, you want to have like a, it's like an Easter egg hunt. Get a hold of Christmas cards and, yep. and see how many little jewels you can find. Doogie Hauser, How great is that? Yep. That was in there as well. The yeah, Spike yeah. Loomis, Maudine. Although I thought Maudine was a mule who played your she was. Uh, deceased yeah, wife. She was. But no. <laughs> well, <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> whatever. It's okay. Hey, and, I saw uh, one. Miss Tisdale, I, of course. Miss Tisdale. Tisdale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I saw one yeah. that was on the back of the laptop. Oh, what'd you see on the back of the laptop? The center cap sticker. Oh, yeah. For the uh, Carol Shelby vector wheel. Uh-huh. You're good. <laughs> he will never be the negative commenter, but he'll catch every mistake. Uh, in fact, good. you could have him filter everything if you would like. I just let it fly. You know, I know. <laughs> it is it what fly. it is. Yeah, I have a lot of people say, he's Bo. Leave him alone. Have you looked at the book yet? Have you looked at My Life, I'm, My Way yeah, yet? I'm about halfway through the Excellent. book right now. Oh, good. Good. My wife's been reading it. She enjoys it, too. So i just got to find time to finish the rest. JohnSchneiderStudios.com? JohnSchneiderStudios.com. Or if you want to buy Christmas cards, just go to my Facebook page and click on Shop Now. It'll take you to the store. Either way. Okay, man. But that would be so great. And thank you for helping to promote this. I much appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you down the road. Remember, folks, you can get it. You can order it now. You'll have it by Christmas. But you can also go and uh, download it now. You can have it by now. The uh, world yeah. in which we live. Now we yeah, you can watch it right now, today. Oh, man, I'm raspy. I got to go because I'm supposed to record an album. Merry I'm Christmas. Like we, we, <laughs> you should go to work. Uh -huh. You guys take care. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. We you. appreciate Thank your time. You. you got it. Bye. And there you go. John Schneider's interview. We got to do that yesterday. I like that he remembered Corndog is always in his truck when we do these interviews. My, my mobile studio. Your mobile studio, which worked out great. I think that was the last time I had to use the mobile studio was when we interviewed him back in March, I believe it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was crazy, too, because we had Tom Wolpat on, and then we had him on. Like It was back-to-back -back weeks. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Christmas cards. Am, am I the only one? I do have the DVD. And, uh, Bernie, I have sent your copy out. I know you don't have yours because I just mailed it today. Uh, Garrett Daniels, our Patreon winner. Garrett, yours is in on in the mail today. Yours went out with Bernie's. Corner, do you have yours? Now, mine, mine is not mine is, autographed. Is yours autographed? Mine is on the way. It's supposed to be autographed, so it's on the way. Okay, yeah. I'm going to give you the gist of it because you guys haven't seen it, and then maybe we can review this at a later time. But it's a Dukes of Hazard episode. That's the answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's what you think it is. <laughs> and uh, just like John said, you know, my biggest question watching this is how did he get away with using the generally? Because he yeah. is. I mean, and he's just flat out using the generally. And yes, it says Bose generally, but come on. It's the I generally. I think he kind of tiptoed around the answer. It, he did. It kind of seemed like he did. But it's there. And it's jumped. And uh, yep. the Uncle Jesse truck has jumped, you know, like we talked about. Now, were you there for that? When you were at no. his... 
No, that was uh, the Uncle Jesse truck jump and the uh, the cop car jump. It was sometime right after the event at Cooters from uh, back in the summer, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. I forgot what their event was called. But anyways, it was like the following week after because uh, Jamie Smith told me, you know, he went up there to do the stunt show up in uh, Virginia for Mm -hmm. Cooters. And then it was like the following week. Several months later then. Yes, yes. Yeah, and and I think they were both pretty much one right after the other, those two stunts. Okay. In this movie, there are so many nods to Dukes of Hazzard fans. You know, my kids seen this when, you know, as I mentioned to John, that was not to to hurt his feelings, but when when the general got decapitated, it broke my son's heart. Uh, He was not happy (laughs) about that part. You're going to have to see the movie to understand what happens. It actually has a point. But Gary Baxley's in the movie. And he plays the role of Gary Baxley. Byron Cherry is in the movie. He plays the role of Byron Cherry. I think you're going to enjoy all the little nods to our childhood remembrances. I forgot to just ask him. I totally forgot to ask him, like, why were you playing somebody named Denver? Why weren't you just playing John? Because this is totally your life story. I forgot. <laughs> should have asked him that. We, were, we had such a short time frame that we had available yeah that he had available really Mm -hmm. and so we had to just hit the high notes and go from the rest the balladeer is a music singer it's not one i'm familiar with johnny lee is his name i don't know if you guys are familiar with him um Mm -hmm. he is the balladeer in this one yes uh the pizza guy does drive the generally and jump it now it's one jump here's a nice nod to the show it's one jump shot from two different angles so they can you know (laughs) <laughs> recycle it. But uh it was the jump that you were there for, the one at Bose Extravaganza. Yeah, and I remember when we were when they were doing it, they specifically said, Okay, everybody back here, you know, I don't need you in this shot because he said we're shooting it for a movie. And he didn't go into detail, but he just said we're shooting it for a movie. So I need no one in this area here, no one in this area here. He should, you know, he covered all of that. So mm-hmm. I'm sure he probably got two or three different angles. That's interesting. So this must have been in the works for a while and the tale of losing his property there, you know, that was just a month prior to his event, yeah. the Bose Extravaganza thing. So I'm, he was hustling. This all came together at a clip, a real clip. But Christmas Scars is the movie. Um, you can go to John Schneider Studios to get your copy. Again, I just ordered up three, and I uh, wanted them right away, and they, they did come right away. So um, I don't know that I have any other questions about it. I was curious. Did you talk to Jamie about how the... Um, whether he built any more cars after all the filming. Like, is there another one coming? I will give you one spoiler. The way that this ends does lead you to believe that there might be another one. He didn't really go into detail. And, you know, Jamie's really professional about, you know, whatever projects he's working on. He's not going to give any details or show any pictures or videos or anything like that. So, of course, he's not going to tell me if they are or not. But he did say that he was going to be back for the extravaganza in 2020. Mm -hmm. So they may have something else in the works or whatever. He did say that the car that they used that John jumped is the same car that went under the tree. And uh, Jamie said they basically, they just removed the roll cage. Because if you remember, the A-pillars are actually the the, roll bar. That's literally part of the structure of the car. My wife said that out loud, like, where'd the roll cage go? I mean, it, <laughs> <laughs> loud. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's a move. And when play you see along, it, play and along. anybody watching who knows anything about cars will realize that that's just the skin of a roof. It's like a stock right. car. Right. I mean, but it, it actually, it's just sheet the, metal. the converted Crown Vic, you know, the A-pillars that you see on the exterior of the car are the roll bar. So anyways, he said, Jamie told me that they just, they cut out that section. Well, you, let me backtrack. They repaired the jump car and then they cut the roof off jamie said that it was done in a way they could easily just put another roll bar in it Mm -hmm. repair the roof and all that and then put the car back to use for either another jump or whatever he wants to do with it so it's not like they just completely ruined the car because it's fixable so and who knows he may have already fixed it i'm not sure according to uh everything i've seen on social media it's put back together okay yeah, the the movie ends though with the uh, the general is now convertible, and uh, like it drives off into the sunset. In fact, boy, I'm giving all the spoilers here, but nonetheless, uh, <laughs> now you know what you need to know, and once you guys have seen it, we can chat about it later. I'm sure. Okay. 
Uh, well, that should bring us to the end of this episode. Again, next week, that'll be our last regular show of the year. We'll have one more big Patreon show. We're Instead of doing a second hour on Patreon next week, we're going to kind of do a big finale show. Uh, we're going to have our man Dan Atkinson on who is actually sponsoring the Patreon show. So that means we're taking Dan's dollars and donating those to Toys for Tots as well, which mm, is nice. extra awesome. Uh, but yeah. that will mean next week, our last iTunes uh, normal show is A Christmas Story, which I'm very much looking forward to because it is one of oh, my yeah. all-time favorite Christmas movies. Then we might take the following week off because it's New Year's and, <laughs> and I'm leaving town and I don't want to yeah. work. <laughs> and we're all going to be gassed. <laughs> we should Comes be down gassed. To that, yeah. We should be yeah. gassed. Uh, everybody, thank you for listening. You can find again, the show again in iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Stitcher, and of course on themusclecarplace.com as always. If you'd like to join in on the Patreon stuff, especially this month for the, the Toys for Tots giveaway, go to patreon.com slash kfshow. Whatever you donate this month, whether it's a, a big one time or you just up your, your membership level, we're going to put it to good use. That is our plan. Fellas, anything else? Are we good? Want a car joke? Yeah. Two car antennas got married. The wedding wasn't much, but the reception was amazing. I'm sure it was. <laughs> I heard a joke on their way here that I think you have told me before. Want to hear it? Yeah. A guy and his buddy are out hunting, and his buddy gets shot. Somehow, he gets really hurt. He calls 911, and he goes... I don't know what to do. We're trapped here in the woods. Um, I think my friend is dead, and he's not responding. I don't know what to do. What should, can you please come help me? And the 911 operator said, all right, the first thing we need to do is you got to make sure that he's actually dead first. Let, let's calm down. And he goes, okay, 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 okay. And then you hear, <laughs> then he comes back on and says, okay, he's, he's definitely dead. Now what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, where that came from, I did tell you that joke. And come around this week, I subscribed to a news service, and that joke was a joke that was sent out to like seven or eight different countries. They were voting for the funniest joke that, That's ever. what I heard. It was a survey yeah. from like a laughter.com or something like that, like the top yeah. best jokes ever. Yes. <laughs> I knew when I heard it, it was your joke. Yeah. Uh, that you would do it. <laughs> Uh, Yotech, Aluma, Holly, and of course Policy Genius, thank you for, for being here. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. We will catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.